Updates. Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I am driving this. This is the Fiat 118 NE. Actually, this is not the 118 NE. This is the 138D. But you get the gist. This is the diesel version of the 118 NE. Any which way, straight away we are going to be opening the engine bay, which is quite unique. You know why? Because it opens like this. Yeah, that is right. This is how the engine bay actually opens, and that is the diesel engine. There is the battery. I mean, it looks kind of compact, but it's completely filled with a lot of stuff. Looks quite nice, especially the way this engine bay opens. Have you ever seen anything of that sort? Well, I think some of the cars come with it still. Can you guess which ones? So we're just going to shut this at the moment, which is easy. It's done and dusted. So the design is very squarish. This was actually based on the Fiat 124 from the 60s, which now is actually sold in Russia. If you know the name Lada, you would know what I'm telling you right now. And this is very boxy. The Padmani, the premier Padmani was very curvy. And you can see the design has this square treatment everywhere. Square lights, square indicators. Okay, Fiat Classic Car Club of India member, PAL Premier Automobile Limited, and the about sticker, which actually improves the performance of this diesel car. Fog lights are also placed here. Bumper is metal actually so you have to be a little scared while coming near this car and has this apple logo which improves the reliability of this vehicle just kidding from the side it is actually longer than the padmani that's why it is more than four meters in length but the wheels are really puny in fact the size of the wheels 155 can you see that yeah 155 70 13s and you get this nice plate here you know premier was doing it may before mercedes maiba did it anyways indicator right there Mirrors don't get internal adjustment and you get a nice antenna which is so long it can actually converse with NASA as well, just kidding. Coming to the rear of the car, there's this fake AC vents, Faisal Khan's fingers of truth, not really happy with that and another Apple logo which improves the overall reliability of this car. Now the exhaust is a single piece unit, no fixed stuff happening here and you can see the underbody of this vehicle, obviously rear wheel drive and metal there okay it says 138d right there i'm going to remove the keys of the car which are there in my pocket at the moment and there are three keys you know why because one is to open the car one is to open the boot and the glove box and one is to turn on the car so a lot of keys forget keyless entry none of that bullshit works here so you're just going to open it right away which means slotting it here and there opens the boot of the vehicle now i can keep the key in my pocket because i can just slot it back into place and there it opens quite a bit wheel arches are here this is actually the spare wheel of the vehicle. The boot is actually big enough. I'm quite impressed by the boot size. And there, I just push it down and it shuts. Wow, that is quite unique and nice. I like it for sure. And this car was more spacious. And that's something you can see clearly. There's better legroom on offer here. So once I sit inside, I can see I can actually stretch because legroom and room is much better than the Padmani. And headroom is also slightly better. Under thigh support though, isn't the best as such. And there's this massive hump in the center. So two people will be comfortable at the rear, but without their heads, of course, no headrest at all. Speakers are placed here on the parcel shelf. The dashboard design looks quite nice. I really like the dashboard design. It's actually quite impressive. Seat belts don't get the height adjust function. There's a light placement on the top, which actually works. Handle to hold onto and ashtrays on all the freaking doors. That's also pretty cool. So I'm just going to shut this for a moment and you can see window area is not that large it is actually a very airy car but no head and i can easily move the seat so it has a boss mode take that skoda <laughs> just kidding let's get outside so the seat belts are not auto pulling so you really have to actually uh, what do i say pull it and adjust it according to yourself anyways let's get inside and uh, i already got inside i'm getting inside again so here you see there's an ashtray so every door has a ashtray which i told you there's no dead pedal ac vents here now this is a light which first when you put on ignition it turns on and when it turns off then only you can turn on the car it gets bucket seats very comfy like it has sofa type seats of course and uh, this is for the headlight as well as the indicator of the vehicle and then i just shut the door oh my god the seats are super hot so it gets heating function inbuilt as such and there is a glove box here, so you have to actually turn it to open, but I will just take the liberty of pulling it out like that. And then it's not going to really slot into place because I had to remove it. I'll just put it back into place. I'm so sorry. I'm just going haywire right now. Now, where is the key, the key, the key? Uh, okay, it says J, which is actually the key of the vehicle. There's this grass here. Okay, there's storage space right there. Handbrake and seat belts are like an aircraft one. Yeah, the one you see in aircraft, that's how the seat belts are. There's no bottle holder, so there's a bottle right in the center. Audio system, AC vents, there's some storage 
right there no auto dimming mirror and here you get a mirror which is impressive here you get a i don't know holder for this peacock sort of a thingy meanwhile the steering wheel is really huge the horn horn is also actually quite nice and this is for the hazard light okay anyways the instrument cluster is a nice looking retro unit this is for the speedometer odometer and this is the trip meter here you get a clock that's not a tachometer by the way this is the fuel meter this is the temperature meter and these are the telltale lights let's do one thing let's turn on the car i actually should have initiated the turn on earlier only so here is where the key goes so i'm just going to put the key inside and there now you see this red light is on so let that go off and then you will turn on the vehicle i like not so hard plastics in this car which is quite impressive headroom is so much better than the padmini in fact i feel quite spacious inside this car mirror adjustment is not the easiest you have to do it manually and let's do one thing let me press the clutch and let me turn on the car and here we go now it's not going to turn on because that light is still on so you're not going to waste time here let's do one thing let's start driving right away i wonder how i'm going to drive without turning on the car though before we go though how can i miss this there is actually a door pocket which is not on the door but there is space to keep stuff which is quite impressive and you can see exposed wiring this is to open the hood of the vehicle oh my god they used to make different kind of cars and there's actually a 12 volt charging socket right there so a lot of attention to detail in this car and that's the reason why it was the luxury version offered by premier in front of the padmani so you can see the replacement but never replaced it as such let's start driving right away All right, rose to life. First gear. First me. First me. Yeah, it's a lot of slick. Hai. And we are off. And I'm quite surprised by the level of smoothness of the gearbox. Okay, the engine struggles. It's a naturally aspirated. We are into second gear. You know why the gearbox is so smooth? Mostly in cars, what happens is they have the gear lever. Then they have a cable which connects to the gearbox, which is little bit far. Here, the gearbox is right below the gear lever, so there are no cables. That's the reason the gearbox is so smooth shifting. The car is actually quite noisy, not very refined as such, but like I told you, the gearbox is amazing. So the 118 NE was actually launched, I think, in 1985. Okay, there is no grunt, so I have to really downshift, and off we go. Come on, full throttle. It doesn't have that pickup as such, which we expect from modern diesel engines, because obviously of turbocharging, there's no turbocharger here, and it gets very noisy. There's no tachometer to speak of, and we are going to try and take a U-turn. Oh my God, that thing is making so much sound as well. The steering wheel has no feel or feedback, but that's the beauty of this thing. Here, I'm just going to get into first gear, and we are going to make a turn. No power steering bullshit here, but the turning radius is also not that small. Here, we're going to get into reverse, and yeah, there's a lot of effort in the steering wheel at slow speeds or no speeds. No reverse parking camera, but you can hire a person who can sit in the boot and tell you if there's something or an obstacle you're going to hit, and off we go. So 1985, this was launched. In 1996, they actually came up with a diesel version of this car known as a 138D. The reason why it's known as a 138D is very simple because of the displacement, which happens to be I think 1380 somewhere, where about 1371 or something. So they call it the 138D. And down a hill, obviously there is more peppy performance. Steering wheel, like I was telling you, doesn't have much feel or feedback, but it's very hard because not a power steering, and there is some. Amount of roll as well. This produces 42 horsepower. The 118 NE is obviously a Nissan engine, Fiat 124 body with a Nissan engine. Produces around 52 horsepower, so 10 horsepower less, but I think better torque here. Torque numbers, I think around 80 newton meters. I'm not too sure about that, but fuel efficiency was really awesome in this car. It used to return somewhere around 90 to 20 kilometers per liter, which was fantastic. It weighs around 1300 kgs. Obviously, because of the diesel engine, it weighs slightly more as well. Braking performance is not that great, but you know what? Uh, you can obviously use the. Oh my God, I was in the wrong gear. What am I doing? Yeah, so I was telling you, oh my God, there is so much heft in the steering wheel somehow, but then there is no feel in the center head position. The horn, horn is really very nice. Gets boomy and loud in the higher end of the rev range. Now, the whole idea with Premier was that they picked up the 124 body from Fiat. Then the Fiat 124 was really very popular. It was so popular. It was so popular that it even got the 1966 car of the year. And straight, na? Yeah, straight. Right. So it got a 1966 Car of the Year award, and then uh, Fiat actually replaced it. But they sold the toolkits and everything to a lot of people. Fiat in Spain, Kia in Korea, Soviet Union, whatever the government in the in Russia, of course. 
and in okay brakes are little soggy as such in second make some noise so you have to be a little careful with second of course and in india they sold it to premier but premier was like okay we'll take the body but we'll do our own engine so they sourced the engine from nissan and this is a one uh, sorry the nissan engine is a a12 i think which is a12 1.2 liter unit and 1180 was the displacement that's a 118 ne ne stands for nissan engine of course and 138d is completely different but the car is the same you can call it the 118 any diesel version although this doesn't have a nissan engine this is a engine which was sourced from italy overall performance is actually quite nice ride is also quite good as such and it's obviously rear wheel drive here the best thing was that uh, this was like a premium version from a premier when compared to the padmani but somehow did not catch up in terms of sales however this platform is i think the fifth most popular platform in the world in terms of sales and the lada is the second most selling car so this same 124 platform is extremely popular it's still in production in russia right now and uh, amassing a lot of sales because it's very durable braking performance could be better though and this auntie has no regard to seeing right or left she just comes across forgetting that i don't have abs i might be fred flimstone i have to put my feet down to stop the car <laughs> jokes aside i love the gearbox on this car it is absolutely smooth shifting now in 1985 when it was launched price was around rupees 1.5 lakhs which was quite expensive when compared to the other models available specifically it was maruti which kind of killed premier because premier did not change much and then maruti obviously had a more cost effective car with better fuel efficiency due to front wheel drive and lighter weight of course more modern and more sorted problem with premier uh, even at the padbini or the 118 any was a lot of rusting issues and that rusting was kind of a big deal okay every time i get into second now i kind of freak out there is a big fat bump here so we're just going to take it easy my goodness i have to put in a lot of steering effort i've driven a lot of old cars but but the 118 any was one vehicle i was always thinking how would it be so we're just going to launch it a little aggressively hopefully the owner doesn't get pissed off and here we go First gear, almost 30 kilometers per hour. Top speed is 106 kilometers per hour, which makes it pretty fast. I love the gearbox. Yeah, this is how gearboxes should be done on cars. Not the steering wheel, of course. The steering wheel is humongous, and then because of the small wheels, it kind of crashes into bumps as such. So I'll tell you the reason why the Padmani, rather the Padmani, was a big hit. The 118 any, not so much, because. Uh, premier was not able to produce as many units as fast most people think because of maruti you know premier went down under that is one reason for sure the other reason was premier used to take its own sweet time to make the cars that's the reason the waiting period was humongous i know people who waited 6 7 years to get this car and that was a long waiting period plus there were certain issues with in terms of rusting and stuff which got resolved i think when they came up with the viceroy version and then they also collaborated with persia however all the rumors stated that they put the tud5 engine in the car no they did not that went in the zen and the st it never came in this particular car this always had an italian diesel sourced engine and then i think price around before it was discontinued in 2001 it was roughly around 7 and a half lakhs which is still quite value for money because this was like the luxury offering from premier and honestly I was so looking forward to driving this car and now finally I can sleep peacefully because it's so difficult to find one and find one in immaculate condition now this one is an absolute gem of a condition because it is having original body color as well we should go from the right side I think because I don't know what kind of a road this is but <laughs> this is worse than the road I drive in Delhi where there's a tree in the middle of the road I love the fact there's a clock which is so Mercedes old old type design and uh, yeah this is a wonderful car obviously it could not catch up to the success which was enjoyed by the okay we're going to turn here and yeah some amount of roll the kind of success which was enjoyed by the padmini the 118 any though offered more space and definitely a premium appeal when compared to the padmani also i don't understand why they went for a nissan engine as such all of the fiat engine could have got the job done but because of the nissan engine there was more punch on offer there was better grunt as well but fuel efficiency was not the car's forte which something the diesel engine was able to rectify to a great extent because like i always say a diesel is a diesel is a diesel is a diesel i think we're going to hit a dead end so we're just going to break and take a u turn and let's see if i can manage in one go i think i will but i need to get into first gear no i'm not going to be able to manage because i will have to take a reverse here for sure yeah just about it no is it going to touch oh my goodness i kind of managed that i'm so proud of myself today and yeah we we'll have to take reverse because in the excitement i forgot there is a divider right ahead handbrake handbrake is not working which means that i have to use some skill set today yeah yo 
playing with the clutch as well as the brakes and off we go at slow speed you get a proper workout of sorts because yes the steering is extremely hard and off we go there's a green light which is blinking what is that light for indicator okay indicator light oh i'm so stupid <laughs> So guys, this is my vlog of the Premier 118 any diesel version, the 138D. Absolute fantastic, a different kind of feel altogether. And finally, I have driven this car. I searched for it so much, so much, so much. Now you have no idea. Very difficult to find, and that's the reason why it also goes for a good price because people who know the value of this machine will definitely opt for it because it is indeed quite stunning in the way it drives. Very different, very comfy, and uh, maybe the petrol engine would offer a lot more grunt. The diesel is for efficiency. For sure. If you like this vlog, make sure to give the thumbs up. That's a like button, and also subscribe to the channel. I will see you guys in the next video real soon. Bye bye.